Brian, uh, one, again, we talk about jurisdictional issues. I was really surprised she was allowed to refer to, uh, or the prosecutor, another trial, or the witness was allowed to refer to the other trial. That is a no-no where I come from. But I'd also like to get your, your thoughts on that, as well as he said something really interesting, and the defense lawyer, I would imagine, is either to pounce on it or wait for summation, that he knew when he got the transcript it wasn't in there because he had it texted to him that's one thing, that's fair, but somebody must have pointed that specific item out for him to know that it's not in that transcript. I'd say that's a witness coaching, or at least that's what I'd argue for the defense. I got about 45 seconds. So uh, I somewhat disagree with you because somewhere in the jury instructions, the jury is going to be advised by the judge at the end of this trial that there's nothing inappropriate about a witness talking to a lawyer before they testify. Of course they're prepared. Nobody takes the stand unprepared. I don't care if it's a detective, a defense witness, an expert witness, everybody's prepared. You, you don't walk into court unprepared. You know, a lawyer doesn't speak before a jury not knowing what his thoughts are gonna be, okay? The problem she made in this case was she asked a question that she didn't know the answer to, okay, mm. number one. Number two, it's not a hard-hitting cross. Right. Who cares that he went into this guy's office? So what does right. it tell us? It means nothing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, fair point on the law with respect to that. It's still something I make a big deal of in uh, the fact that his statements are coerced.